Wow, that... Oh, look at that little cheeky monkey. Stay in there, buddy. Stay in there, buddy. Oh, 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 whoop, whoop, whoop. Now I'm in trouble. <laughs> Stay in there. Stay in there. Stay in there. Get in there. Get in there. Oh, no, 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 no. Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to the vlog. I hope the start of your day is absolutely incredible. As for me, I have a pretty busy day ahead of me, mainly because Lori is not going to be here today, which is just a bummer because I'm so concerned about her. I told you guys last night that she had kind of a little bit of a leg injury, some kind of nerve thing going on. We're really not sure what's going on. She got it checked out this morning. Uh, Doc says she should definitely rest and hopefully it will get better, but it's stressful. So again, keep her in your thoughts and prayers, please, guys. I I don't know what I would do if Lori is laid up for any length of time. And she's actually going out of town with my daughter again to Disney this coming up weekend. So she needs to get better. So let's hope she's all right. Uh, and you're going to see what it's like here when Lori's not here. Because trust me, she really does a lot of help for me. So I have to kind of try to pick up her slack a little bit, which is going to be tough because I am just not that good at it. But hey, we're going to do the best we can possibly do. And we're going to make this day amazing. So what do you say we get it started? Just like every day, I want to check and see what's happening as far as baby colubrids go. So let's go ahead and just do a real quick rapid look at these guys. Ooh, look at this, look at this. Oh my gosh, there's a bunch of little scaleless Texas rat snakes. Take a look at those and all, ooh, look at the pattern on this one. Holy cow, that thing is crazy looking. Whoop, and we're starting to get some escapees, guys. Oh, 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 oh. And we have an albino corn snake in here too. Whoop, stay in there, buddy, stay in there, buddy. Oh, 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 whoop, whoop, whoop. Now I'm in trouble. <laughs> All right, stay in there. Stay in there. Stay in there. Get in there. Get in there. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh-oh. I've said this before. You open up a box and it's just like spring. Okay, get in there. Get in there. All right. <laughs> that was a close one. That almost ended up with a bunch of snakes on the floor for sure. Let's see if this next box is a little easier. All right, what do we have here? Oh, these are really awesome. Okay, okay, okay. Take a look at this. These are just corn snakes here. This is actually a little sun-kissed corn. It's uh, really a beautiful, and sun-kissed corns are actually a recessive mutation. But take a look at this too. Ooh, wow, look at that. That is actually a hypo sun-kissed corn snake. And the reason that they call them sun-kissed corn snakes Kathy Love in Arizona actually produced the first ones when they were living down in Florida. It looked like a sun had kissed its head with that pattern. So again, really beautiful snakes. And there's so many corn snakes. I mean, we produce a lot of corn snakes because there's so much variety in them and they make such great pets. I've said this a million times when people ask me what pet should they get first, I always say a ball python or a corn snake. And there's a million different colors in both ball pythons and corn snakes. So we try to work with as many of them as we can. Let's see what else we have here. Okay, another corn snake clutch and again this would just be a typical you know normal corn snake or a wild type corn snake which is really just a beautiful snake on its own but then you can see we have little aneurythristic corn snakes here which are called black corn snakes and then finally we have of course a snow corn snake which is actually an albino aneurythristic or an albino black corn snake basically it's a double recessive mutation and look at that little monkey it's trying to bite me <laughs> I love when snakes come out when they have such big attitudes. I mean, hey, let's face it, they're on their own. Their mom and dad aren't going to protect them, so they have to have a big attitude, and this little guy certainly does. Next box. Oh, some more scaleless rat snakes. Take a look at some of the colors and patterns on that thing. That is going to be unbelievably beautiful when it sheds. And these guys actually start to color up when they're about, you know, three months old. All the reds and oranges come in, so it's going to be really beautiful. And then look at that, a whole bunch of little Pueblin milk snakes. Oh, look at these little feisty monkeys. And again, we hatched a ton of Pueblin milk snakes right early in the season, and, uh, and now we're starting to hatch more again. So uh, this is just awesome. What a beautiful, look at all those snakes right here. Uh, Lori better get back soon because she's got to set a lot of baby snakes up. Moving on, oh, some more corn snakes. You can see they're all like, oh, hello, I'm coming out. And basically what you have here is these are just normal corn snakes here. And of course, these are albinos. This right here would be what they call a hypo corn snake, which is just lacking some of the melanin or black pigment, but not albino. And oh, I better watch out here because I'm starting to get snakes out all over the place. How in the world am I going to do this with one hand? Get back in there, bud. Get back in there, bud. You're okay. You're okay. 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 All right, I'm going to set the camera down for a second.
Got to make sure that there's no heads caught in there. That's the one thing you have to always be super careful about when you're trying to put snakes back in a box is they'll be crunching out and so you got to be really, really, really careful. I tell you, that's never an easy task whatsoever. All right, a couple more boxes real quick. Oh, okay, here's another Hypo Sun Kiss that I was talking about earlier. And again, that's just a really gorgeous, aren't corn snakes so cute when they're babies? And it looks like all we have here is just a whole clutch that's pipping. You can see a little nose there and some bubbles down here. And then this clutch hasn't started hatching yet. So again, we're still hatching hardcore. So there's only going to be more and more baby snakes hatching over the next couple weeks. So it's really exciting. Uh, but every day, you know, when you just hatch even just a hundred or so snakes a day, you figure that's, you know, 700 snakes a week and over and over. That can be really huge. Now, hey, listen, when I had my larger collection before I downsized, I used to sometimes hatch a thousand snakes in a day. So, uh, hey, 70, 80, 100 snakes, it's, it's like nothing to us, right? Anyways, it's really still exciting. Oh, and here we go again. Just another bunch of eggs that are just starting to hatch right here, pipped out over here. This clutch hasn't even started. And again, this is one of those aneurythristic corn snakes, or what they call black corn snakes. Now, what's interesting about the black corn snakes, believe it or not, when you're down in South Florida, sometimes you can catch aneurythristic or black corns almost as commonly as the normal wild type red corns. Because basically, it's a mutation that started in the wild and it thrived. Because you gotta remember, if a mutation does well in the wild, more and more of them will be produced and then they actually thrive. There are certain islands in Indonesia where there's entirely black water monitors because that mutation, which is melanistic or jet black, thrived in that environment. So you do see a lot of aneurythristic or black corns in Florida. So anyways, that's it. That's what's had so far today. So it's a good way to start off. It has absolutely been a crazy day already and we have a long way to go. Thankfully, I have Jessica, of course. Uh, she is not only the gecko master but she's saving my butt because i was gonna maybe have to set geckos up and she took it away so holy cow there's a lot of geckos gosh, guys. <laughs> oh my gosh look at all these amazing ge oh gosh there's gonna be some good ones so i'm gonna let jessica go ahead and set up the babies really quick but do me a favor jessica and hold back just uh maybe four or five to show so we'll come back after jessica's done and we'll just take a look at some of the coolest geckos she set up. they're all cool but we'll take a look at a few real special ones all right so next up is to pack some snakes for shipment starting with ball python. So for those of you that don't know, I typically don't pack snakes. And the reason I don't pack snakes, honestly, is I hate selling snakes. It just makes me kind of depressed. Uh, and I appreciate everyone's business. And with people that buy from me, obviously that supports me and my family and my workers and all the other things. So thank you so much when you do buy from me. But uh, I personally let Lori and everyone else do the packing because it kind of depresses me a little bit when I put them in a bag and ship them out. I just want to keep everything. So, uh, But because Lori's not here, I've got no choice to pack. So let's hit some ball pythons. So the first ball python I'm packing is actually this really pretty male chocolate ball python. And you guys know I love the chocolate ball pythons. As a matter of fact, we had the very first chocolates ever that were able to be proved out co-dominant. And of course, we produced the food supers and then the camos, which was the super chocolate pinstripe. So uh, this project just is kind of near and dear to my heart, but this little guy has to go. Next up is this well-started spinner blast. Now spinner blasts are actually pastel spider pinstripes. Uh, and again, gosh, this is kind of weird. Now, not that I'm bragging anyways, but we actually did produce the first spinner blast as well. So uh, that's kind of weird, right? Again, people ask me all the time, like, Brian, how many first have you produced? And, and the truth is, is that I really don't care about that kind of stuff. It doesn't like, I don't have an ego in that sense. I'm very, very lucky to have produced a bunch, but uh, I don't keep track. And there's even times where other people get credit for producing things that we produced a year earlier or something and I don't even care I just let them take the credit so because to me it's just about working with cool animals who cares who produces them first but regardless the spinner blast is finding a new home take a look at that beautiful cine ball python again this is just a single gene co-dominant animal but man that thing is gorgeous and it's heading out today and then lastly for ball pythons this beautiful silver streak mojave is going out and these silver streak mojaves are actually a super pastel black pastel mojave ball python but just look at how crazy it is so all right this goes in a bag and then we're on to the next next up i have to actually pack a couple colombian boas and they're actually females so what i always do when i'm packing stuff like this is I'll just take one last look make sure everything looks good these are feeding they fed four or five times for us now and then I'll give a quick double check just to make sure the sex is right because uh, we want to make sure that the animals are healthy number one and number two that they're the proper sex right so that one looks really good and then just on to the next one again a quick inspection everything looks good and it's a girl so 
All right, we're good with boas and ball pythons. Now we gotta move on to colubrids. And now the fun part, little colubrid snakes. Uh, I am definitely no expert at putting colubrid snakes in deli cups, Lori is the master at it. But this happens to be a pair of possible head creamsicle scaleless corn snakes. Doggy, take a look at this. Take a look at this little monkey here. This is a scaleless Texas rat snake, but wow, that pattern and color is ridiculous. I have a feeling this one's going to be a little bit of a challenge to get in the cup. That little sucker bit me as I was putting him in. He stuck his head on and went BAM! So those rat snakes, they're absolutely beautiful, but they definitely have a little bit of character. By far the hardest part of packing these little tiny baby albino garter snakes is sexing them. I mean, they're so small, you have to have really good eyes to see if they're a male or female. That happens to be a little girl. And there's a little boy. The thing that's interesting about these little tiny garters is that males typically only get about half the size of females. So uh, it's pretty interesting to see a little tiny male breed a really big female. So, uh, all right, I've got to get one more pair of normal checker garters. Stop, stop, stop. It's amazing how adorable these little guys are. So, okay, that should be it for colubrids. Now on to leopard geckos. All right, so we are on to geckos, and uh, we have a lot of leopard geckos. There are racks and racks and racks of leopard geckos. And I'm gonna be honest with you, I had no idea what the system was. So Jessica just kind of taught me the system, and I think I might be more confused than I was when we started. So essentially, I am looking for a Hypo Maxno white and yellow gecko, TI3 718-16-1 whatever so I guess it's like T then I have to find I3 and it's 718 16 1 it seems completely reasonable to me <laughs> I'm totally gonna be screwed packing these leopard geckos but let's get to it I mean seriously people look at some of these geckos I mean it's breaking my heart to see them go but uh, hey listen I appreciate the people that bought them but oh my gosh someone's getting some really nice geckos okay so I am officially done with packing the geckos and all the snakes uh, unfortunately it took me so long that we missed the FedEx <laughs> delivery so I have to actually go drop them off at FedEx but uh, I tell you what I don't want to pack anymore guys <laughs> So Jessica is done setting up the geckos. Let's take a look and see what her picks were for the cool animals to show us. What do we have? Got another total eclipse, guys. Oh, oh my gosh, that is beautiful. What the heck is that? Hopefully that is gonna be one of these. Oh my gosh, look at how gorgeous, guys. And a lot of you guys have been asking us to show like some adults to babies, and I totally get it because they do change a lot. But look at how gorgeous that one is and what it might turn into. This one seems like it might have a little bit more pattern than that one though, huh? Yeah, it might break up though as okay. it's older. Gotcha, um, wow. That... <laughs> oh, look at that little cheeky monkey. Oh my gosh. <laughs> And look at how beautiful this total eclipse is. Wow. Yeah, we yeah. are line breeding these guys though to get less of a pattern. They are just snow white and yellow eclipses. Okay, so those are snow white and yellow eclipse and we're just breeding them to get less and less pattern that's turning them more white with a little bit of freckling on them. Absolutely gorgeous. What are you doing, little guy? What is this little monkey doing? He was <laughs> chewing on his toe. But this little guy is a Tremper Marble Eye. So the Marble Eye is actually a similar thing to Eclipse where it's got the pigmentation, but uh, it's not related to the Eclipse. It's something that Matt Baronic from Sasvac Reptiles actually developed that line. And uh, again, it's similar to the Eclipse. It's similar, but, a but has a little bit different of a look to it. This little guy, I think, is just a, it's just a little sun glow. Tremper. <laughs> it's a little sun glow tremper. Yeah. But look at how cool the pattern is. I mean, it's almost, it almost looks like a, a like a, an aptor or something, huh? Yeah, it does. But it doesn't have the eye pigment? No, I don't think so. We might have to wait until it gets a little bit bigger. Some yeah. of the eyes are like so tiny when they hatch that it's hard to tell if they're eclipse yeah. or marble I, eyes. I literally can't tell at all until they get bigger if they're eclipse. So I just uh, take Jessica's word for it because she seems to be able to do it. So anyways. Well, when they're all eclipsed, you can kind of tell. Yeah, but yeah. if it's just like a snake eye or something, 
and it's yeah. hard. Yeah. Well, there you go, guys. Uh, your daily update. Well, I haven't updated you in a few days on geckos, so I hope that you got your gecko fill. We will continue to show you geckos because we have a lot of them hatching and some absolutely gorgeous ones. So, uh, as always, good job, Jessica. Thank you. So before I get out of here, I've got to pull two really quick clutches of eggs from corn snakes. I'll be honest with you. I peeked in both of them. They look like they're not very good clutches, but hey, we still have to pull the eggs. It's not like we can just leave them in there. So let's see what we have going on. The first one is a het albino scaleless. Oh, it looks like mama's out of the clutch box. So let's just go ahead and see what she has. Can I see one good egg up? Two good eggs. All right, all right. Not the end of the world there. There's one egg, there's two eggs, and it looks like a slug. And let's see if there's anything else. Is that all she had in here for me? Yeah, that's it. So hey, two good eggs and one slug. Hey, that's 66%. That's actually pretty good. Just a pretty small clutch of eggs. And next up, let's see what we have going on here. What do you have? Whoa, that looks like a really not such a good clutch of eggs right there. Let's get the mom out of here. Whoa, whoa, whoa. All right, looks like a bunch of eggs, but it looks like a, most of them are infertile. So let's see what happens here. Oh, get her back. So it's really not that uncommon, again, towards the end of the season when we're at the tail end of second clutches to have almost no fertile eggs because typically those males are just done with fertile sperm and the eggs don't do well. So let's see what we have here. We literally have two good eggs. There's one egg that's attached to a slug right there that I'm just going to really gently just kind of pop off. And then one other good egg right here. And it looks like, look at this, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, infertile eggs. <laughs> oh, well, what can you do again? It's the way it goes at this time of the year. So, anyways, I'm just going to go ahead and get these set up in an egg box. I'm going to get out of here. Go check up on Lori because I've talked to her a couple times today, and she's definitely been in a lot of pain. So, hopefully, she'll kind of be on the mend soon, and uh, we can get her back to work and just get her back to feeling good because she's going out of town this weekend. So, I want to make sure that she's 100% so she can enjoy her trip down to Disney. All right, guys, so I am fine home and I am checking it up on this lady here how's your leg feeling a little better a little better does that mean you're gonna take the rest of the week off I don't think that's an option anyway <laughs> Susie hi you you coming up to join us too say hi to everyone so it's getting better you think or uh, I think so hopefully by tomorrow it'll be a lot better. I tell you what guys it was definitely a very hard day without Lori doing her work having to do her stuff and my stuff I'm hoping she gets better soon and gets back to some normalcy for sure. So you guys just do me a favor, keep her in your thoughts so that she's 100%. Plus she's going to Disney this weekend. So she definitely wants to get better for that. I guarantee you no matter how bad her leg hurts, she's going to be feeling fine when it comes to Disney. I hope so because if today was the day I was leaving, I would not be going. <laughs> Regardless, guys, I hope that you have an amazing day. Thank you so much for tuning in today. You guys mean the world to me. Can you do me a favor? Can you smash that like button? And make sure to turn the post notifications on. Make sure to be kind to somebody. I promise I'm going to see you guys tomorrow.